बसमीम सुबहान अल्लाह सुबहान अल्लाह बहुत ही आलिशान गिरिया उजारी ड्यू टू दिस गिरिया उजारी माई हार्ट इज मेल्टेड टू आई वुड लाइक टू डू सम गिरिया उजारी टू आई होप आई हैव योर परमिशन Though we are gathered here to study our book study, what is soul? But I'd like to read this beautiful poem, translation, and sing few verses. It is to seek help from Mola. We all are seekers of Mola's help, Mola's love. We need everything from him. Sallama Nasiruddin Hunzai says, "Help, O oh, the King of the Valiant! Help, help, O oh, the Secret of God! Help, the Mother of God, King of the World of Religion! O oh, the Key to the Treasure of the Quran! Help, Knowledge is the Water. Knowledge is the Water, and You are the Throne." Oh the ark of the light of rahman help oh ali of the time maulana kareem oh ali of the time maulana kareem help oh the king of the time help oh sovereign of the two worlds bearer of the crown of divine light O oh, bestower of the treasure of Ismayazam, the soul and the beloved, help! O oh, Imam of the righteous, you are the supreme name of God. O oh, the embodied Quran, the King of Kings, help! Restless Nasir has placed his head at your door, seeking pardon. and weeping help al madad ya shah e mardan al madad al madad e sir yasdan al madad maz hare hak ba शाहे मुल के दीन ए कली दे गंज कुरआन अलमदद इल्म पानी और तू ही अर्श है ए सफी शाहे दौरान मद शहन शाहे दुआलम ताजदारे हनूर हक गंज बख्शे स्मयाजम जानो जाना गंज बख्शे इसमें जानो जानान अल मद इसमें अकबर है खुदा का तू इमाम तू कुर 
शाह शाह अलमदत तेरे दर पर सर रखा है ये नसीर बेकरार उज्र खान हो गया है और गिरिया मदद अलमदत या शाही मरदान अल मदद फरमा मदद फरमा ए मुश्किल कुशा मदद फरमा शुक्र लाहीदुल्ला शुक्र लाहीदुल्ला अलहमदुल्ला वी कंटिन्यू विथ आर बुक स्टडी वॉट इज सोल टूडे वी हैव गैदर्ड टू रिव्यू chapter 4 and it is a session 2 however i did receive a question that some friends said do talk more about gog and magog ya juj wa majuj we talked about ya juj and majuj in question 52 and we discussed few of the tawilat as this allegory has very many tawilat in fact if you were to pick up the books of scholars you will find very many explanations which does not lead to any logic whereas quran is the book of education and it has it is full of logic it is full of logic and surely we know that the quranic language is in allegories all the zahir which is mentioned in the quran has the batin has the tawil and not just one tawil but very many tawilat at one place prophet muhammad had said 70 tawilat in other place it he says 700 tawilat so you can imagine how many tawilat are there of every physical example given in the quran now the question here would be why allah talks in such allegories which are so hard to understand why can't he be simple and straight forward but no he doesn't do that so the question is why very simple answer to it is he does not want to reveal his secrets to those who are not worthy of it now what does that mean when i say those who are not worthy the question would be who is worthy then are we worthy of these tawilat surely being smileys we are the worthy of the tawilat again someone may ask why what have we done so special we have accepted and we believe in the imam of the time or king of the time maulana kareem we believe in this imam and that makes us righteous we have higher supreme status in the whole humanity because imam has two title imam of the whole humanity and imam of the righteous and that is why imam calls us my beloved spiritual children 
Now this itself, this topic of believing in Imam can go into very long discussion, presentation, but I'll focus it on just Batin because that's what we are trying to build here. So we'll keep it very simple and easy. When people, those who do not believe in Imam, when they look at Imam, in fact, let's take the example of Mawla Ali. When people looked at Mawla Ali, they saw his physical body. They saw that he was cousin of the Prophet. And they were not willing to accept the nur which was in him. Some became jealous. For whatever reasons, they were not willing to accept Mawla Ali, who was the Imam at that time. There are very clear hadiths of Prophet Muhammad saying that Mawla Ali is the one who is going to ta'wil, do the ta'wil after me. Prophet Muhammad brought tanzil and the ta'wil, the interpretation of it, has to be, will be done by Mawla Ali. Despite of all what Prophet had said, people did not accept Mawla Ali because they were looking at his physical body. Similarly, when we see the Imam of the time, those who look at his body, they don't understand because he looks like any ordinary human being. But it is the Batin, it is the light within him which we believe in. We believe in Imam that he is full of Noor. And it is his Noor that guides us. But that Noor is in reality invisible to us. Physically, we see Imam the way he is, just like us. There is no difference in Imam physically as per se. And to accept Imam that he is the light, that makes us different from all other humanity. In Quran, if you were to look at chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, it says, Zalikul kitabul arabafi. The word zalika, we hopefully we now know the word zalika in Arabic means that. Whereas in every Quran you pick up, Shia or Sunni, the translation would be this. The whole verse says, Zalikul kitabul arabafi. This is the book. In it is guidance sure. When people look at this verse who are translating, when they are looking at book, they are saying, this is the book. Because they are not able to see the Imam. That is the book. Which book? The living book. So there is no understanding of that. So the translation here is wrong. Any Arabic grammar book you pick up and you look at the word Zalika, it means that. And if you want to know what does this means, this word, the word for this in Arabic is Haza. But look at the Quran. Every Quran will have this translation as wrong. Simply, they are not willing to accept the living book, which is the Imam. So what does this verse say? We are not going to read the wrong translation in our Quran. We will go and Cut the word this and write down that. That is the book. That is the book in its, in it is guidance sure, without doubt, to those who fear Allah. To those who fear Allah, who believe in the unseen. I do not want to go any further. Zalik al Kitab al Arab fi Huddal al Muttaqin al Lazina Yaminun bil Ghayb. Those who believe in Ghayb, in Batin, in Unseen. We are those believers, we believe in Batin. Our Tarika is Batini. Imam is the one who does the Tawilat. Mola Ali being the Asas was the one who interpreted the Quran for us. Surely he is king, so he picks his slaves to do his work. King doesn't do the work, 
but the credit is always of the king and a slave happily give credit to his master so when we talk of gog and magog or yajuj va majuj the tavilat of yajuj va majuj were never out none of our dais have written about yajuj va majuj but in today's time because it's the time of qiyama we read the books of allama nasiruddin hunzai and we find that he has spoken about yajuj va majuj in the time of prophet in the earlier time when there was shariat tawilat are not given and the reason is if tawilat are given prematurely it can harm the shariat and that is why all the secrets are revealed in the right time so yajuj o majuj yajuj o majuj one of the tawil is that these are actually the army of particles one can call it army of iman they are army of particles as we all know about world of particles alam e zarrat the world of particles so if we recall in the physical story when imam zulkarnain when he reaches to this place people tell him could you please built a wall between yajuj and majuj and us because they are very mischievous they always create problem on the earth and zulkarnain builds this wall to keep them away from these people if you were to read about uh, the meaning of yajuj and majuj in different books there are very many funny things one of the understanding is that they are going to climb on this wall and they come down they'll slip down there are so many things which are being said it doesn't make sense but allama nasiruddin hunzai actually speaks about in his books very clearly and we will talk about it so in today's time let's take the this surah kahf in which we had this read this story in question 52 in question 52 we had read that story Zulkarnain is the one who is asked to build this wall between these two mountains because these people who live there they are very destructive. So Zulkarnain says okay I will build the wall. And this wall some interpret some scholars say oh this is the wall which is being mentioned in the Quran that is Alexander's Alexander's wall. In today's time if there were to be a wall like that we can have helicopter looking for it scientists searching for it and we'll find that wall but in the whole world there is no wall which is being mentioned in the quran so that tells us that there is a secrets hidden behind this physical story there are veils so the question would be why quran talks about yajuj o majuj and those yajuj o majuj who will create problems on the earth now when i use the word earth when we see in quran the word earth we now know that the earth is allegorically used for a moment so allama hunzai sahib says that yajuj o majuj are actually this army of particles who can bother a moment in his personal world as very clearly in the verse it says that please zulkarnain build this wall as these yajuj o majuj are mischievous and they create problems on the earth so who and what are we talking about it is actually personal world of a momin is salik these yajuj o majuj create problem for that momin e salik yajuj e majuj cause destruction in a momin and that's why zulkarnain was asked to build this wall but the question is why do they want to de- destruct 
if they are army of particles why do they necessarily want to destruct now let me take you to the history to give another example in the time of musa when musa goes to pharaoh and pharaoh is not accepting islam so musa does some miracles one of the miracle of musa was to have these mosquitoes come in in the egypt and it was army of mosquitoes and they actually destroyed the whole nation the agriculture and everything why would allah destruct the nation when the desire is that they would accept the islam destruction is done for the sake of the construction so in momin salik what happens when there are old concepts old learning it has to be destructed to have the place for rebuilding for new construction let me give you another example let's say there is a nation and there is a lot of corruption going on lot of corruption then there will be revolution but due to that revolution the whole nation will go into problems there will be a lot of destruction but all that destruction which is caused is with the intention to have rebuilding to reconstruct but due to that corruption due to those problems that nation has to go through the destruction similarly a momin is salik when he's walking on this path they learn that whatever i knew old knowledge old concepts whatever i knew i was not progressing it was not taking me where i wanted to go it was a comfortable position and imam sultan mahmud shah has very clearly said in his farman allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad and i'm going to paraphrase it here mola says that that does not want to that man does not want to go anywhere he is happy wherever he is sitting he is happy wherever he is because he knows if the master will not employ him then he will have to work he will have to find work and right now the master is feeding him he is employed he has the salary and the work is good why do i need to do anything different the one who does not want to move further will be very happy at that co status because there is no desire to progress and if there is a desire to progress surely there is destruction there are problems there has to be hard work to learn and to change and to grow change is not easy learning and growth is not easy but each momin is salik has to make that decision with their free will to go through that destruction to be able to construct construct something which will give progress take you further so in brief that's what the meaning of yajuj jo majuj there is much more to this yajuj jo majuj but this is beautiful this is where we can stop and be comfortable that we understand this is remember we had talked about this story of zulkarnain it is about a momin in whom imam is coming so the moment who is not ready the moment who with his free will is not willing to take steps further imam mercifully will build that wall okay if you do not want to go further all right you are happy where you are that wall is built but those mu'minin who do want to go further who do want to change their lives who do want to seek light they have to work hard and for that they have to change they have to learn they have to go through the process of destruction for the sake of construction so alhamdulillah i personally believe each one of you who is here we all are willing to bring changes in our lives with our free wills to move further 
So I hope the friend who had asked this question, you got your answer. And this was, we had studied Surah Kahf, chapter 18, verse 92 to 98. All right, so we come to our question today. We are going to review question number 62. And this question says, this question is about Hazrat, mother of Musa. Was she a prophet? What was her position? If she was not a prophet, how did she get this revelation which is mentioned in the Quran? Was her spirituality same as Bibi Maryam? about whom we discussed the last, in last class. And then, was Hazrat Musa was also a spirit of God? Remember we talked about Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, whose title was Ruhul Allah, son of God. So Hazrat Musa, who is also a prophet, can he be the spirit of God too? So these are the questions. Now let us first talk about Hazrat Musa. Hazrat Musa's father's name is Imran. There are three famous Imran in the history. And those friends who would like to write it down, they should. First Imran, we are talking about the father of Hazrat Musa. Hazrat Maryam's father's name was also Imran. And Mola Ali's father's name is also Imran. Musa's mother, the birth mother, her name was Yaqubud. In Torah, it says Joshid. I may be not pronouncing it very correctly, but Yaqubud is a Muslim name and that was her name. She was from the progeny of uh, Joseph's brother Lavi. So Jacob, who is Hazrat Yaqub, he had 12 sons. One of these sons is Lavi and she is from the family of Lavi. So it's a family of Hujatan and her name was Yaqubud. Now there are different traditions about Hazrat Musa just for your knowledge in history that Harun is said to be his cousin. Sayyidna Jafar al-Yamani says that Harun was his elder brother who was born a year before Musa. He also had a sister and her name was Maryam. In the story, what happens that Yaqubud is pregnant during the time when the Pharaoh has learned that after one year, a child will be born who is going to destruct his kingdom. So what he does, he starts killing all the newborns and he prohibits all couples to not meet until the end of the year. But surely Yaqubud gets pregnant. It's Allah's will. It had to happen. And it is said that there are 70,000 male children who were killed at that time by Pharaoh. Anyhow, so she's pregnant and she's now very fearful of her child's life. So she's not eating and drinking and she's very weak. Her daima, which is like a midwife who would do home deliveries, and she says that you are pregnant and you are not putting on any weight. What's wrong? And she says, I'm scared for my child's life. And she gives her promise that I will make sure that your child stays alive and safe. Do not worry. Take care of yourself. And seeing her strength and the way she promised, Yaqubud trusts her and starts eating and then she's gaining weight. And surely the time comes when she's delivering. And of course... Guards are outside waiting to know what is the result and they can kill the male child if it's born. Surely there is a male child born, Hazrat Musa. But this Dai, she was very clever. So what she does, she takes the remaining tissues, placenta, whatever, and she takes it outside and she says, it's a stillbirth child. Child is dead and there is no, nothing here. So the guard looks and he says, okay, they leave. These two ladies are hiding the child, feeding and taking care of the child. But the restrictions are increasing day by day. 
And the plan was to take Musa out of the city, but they are not able to do that. Surely, Yaakovud, who was a momina, she's praying, she's scared, and she's submitting herself to Mola, her child. She's crying, doing her zikr and giriya uzari. During her zikr and giriya uzari, she gets this revelation, 28 by 7. And it says, so we send this inspiration to the mother of Musa. Suckle, but when thou hast fears about him, cast him into the river. But fear not, nor grieve. For we shall restore him to thee, and we shall make him one of our messengers. So she knew already who was he. So she is feeding him, and then when she really gets scared and this revelation comes, she understands it. She takes him to, takes a wooden basket, a casket or chest, whatever you want to call it. She puts the child in, here, uh, in the chest and she lets it go in the river. So this is a story I'm telling you. Um, so what happens on the other side? Now Pharaoh, who does not want any male children, Pharaoh's wife is actually also Momina and her name is, Muslim name is Asiya. She is the one who takes care of Musa. So what happens, she has in her heart guidance too. And she asks Pharaoh to build a dome, a gumbad, at one of the side of the river Nile. For her to stay there, to feel safe. And Pharaoh does that. Now during all this time, she's spending time at that dome, in that area. And she's waiting at the river. There are different traditions, different uh, traditions you would read. In one of the traditions, it says that she was bathing in that river Nile and this chest comes to her. But I believe um, when I read Sayyidna Jafar Yamni's book, I like to share that story with you. So he says that she would be waiting at that area and of course she had her maids and slaves with her and they did not know why was she spending so much time there. Surely this chest comes floating towards her and she asks her slave, can you see what is in there? And they said, we can't see what is in there. She said, get it for me. When she is able to get the chest, she is looking into it. There is a beautiful male child. Beautiful male child. And look what Quran says. In chapter 20, verse 39, it says, I cast down upon you love from me. When she looks at the child, it was miracle of Allah. And Allah mentions muhabbatan. Wala kaitu alaika muhabbat. It was Allah's plan to put such a noor on this child. When Asya looks at that child, she falls in love with that baby. And she wants it for herself. Now, of course, Pharaoh comes to know about this child and she says, I, I do want to keep this child. This child is so beautiful. I just want to take care of him. And Pharaoh is saying, refusing, refusing. And after some time, he agrees and he says, Take care of him in such a way that he would be helpful in our way. So Asya is now taking care of this child. She is trying to feed this child and he does not accept anybody's breast milk. He is refusing. So Musa from very young age, by birth, newborn, seems to be a very stubborn child. Dai after dai, different breastfeeding dais are you know, called and he does not feed anybody. So this Asya is now very worried. And surely the Dai who had helped him deliver, she brings his birth mother, Yaakovud. Asya, that, you know, she's also, uh, she just delivered her child and she is a wet mother and she can feed your child. And as soon as she starts feeding, Musa accepts her mother's milk and that's how the journey goes. Asya used to be very scared, thinking that if something will happen to this lady, how Musa is going to feed. And she could realize very strong bond between this lady and Musa. And the story goes that after she dies, Asya is happy that, oh, okay, the, this lady is dead. The biological mother dies, actually. And then Asya takes care of him. Now, the question was, Yakebud. Was a prophet? 
her revelations was actually not of a prophetic level she didn't have to have the message for others it was very personal messages but in spirituality she was no different from maryam in spirituality she has no difference from maryam and has it musa so i just want to tell you the story of asia because it's a very interesting story and it will add to our knowledge now this is not from the book what is soul we are moving out of what is soul just to complete the story so we have this satisfaction this asia actually is mentioned in quran she is not born muslim she is not prophet but she is mentioned in quran and that tells us her status how elevated she herself was in chapter 66 surah tahrim verse 11 it says and allah sets forth as an example to those who believe the wife of pharaoh behold she said o oh my lord bear for me in nearness to thee a mansion in the garden and save me from pharaoh and his doings and save me from those that do wrong allah taala ne iman walon ke liye firon ki biwi ki misal bayan farmayi allah has given examples and one of the example is pharaoh's wife and imagine her words she is praying now and this is her prayer she says build for me a house a mansion near you a mansion near you who says that and i cannot recall there's a beautiful ginan actually just like this that peer is saying that keep me next to you so she was an elevated momina who knew what she was doing when she was taking care of musa and she was wife of pharaoh and she is praying to mola that give me house next to you so she is asking for that status where she is with imam next to him and seeking protection from pharaoh and his wrong doings what a beautiful verse about her in quran and in same sura sura tahrim last week we studied about hazrat maryam 66 by 12 so the first asia is mentioned the wife of pharaoh and hazrat maryam is mentioned so those who are thinkers this is just a food for thought we talked about yakebud who is musa's biological mother asia who is mentioned in quran just before maryam in his spirituality tell me do you see who these women were how elevated they were and again just for your knowledge from quran there are four women actually are mentioned two are positive example and two are negative and the positive example we just reviewed mother of hazrat isa bibi maryam and mother of hazrat musa the one who takes care of him hazrat asiya and then the negative examples are wife of hazrat lut and the wife of hazrat nu alai salam this is all just additional knowledge i wanted to share just to you know relate and understand the completeness of the story alhamdulillah we stop here if any one of you have any questions surely you can ask yeah madam nayama this is gulnar gulnar madam gulnar In other tradition, it says that when this wahi was revealed, this inspiration was given to uh, Yakubud. She puts the chest in the river, and her Musa's sister Maryam actually follows the chest, and she sees how Asia has picked up the chest, and she is the one who uh, who brings uh, Yakubud to Asia to feed Musa. So there are different versions of this story. 
but stay connected to essence. We do not want to go into the physicalities. So the important character in the story are these two mothers who took care of this prophet of that time. Of course, the mother of prophet cannot be any ordinary woman. The one who gives birth, she is also an elevated status. And the one who took care of him was also an elevated momina. So imagine the prophets and imams, when they are born from a, a lady, a woman, whoever she is, they are not ordinary women to be able to give birth to these high-ranking, elevated souls. I was just wondering, because if she helped her to hide, then maybe she was also somebody special, but I guess not. She was special, that's why she's mentioned, I'm sure, but her name is not given. Thank you. You're welcome. Huh? Baima, please repeat the ayat. Okay. So twice Gog and Magog has been mentioned in Quran. Gog and Magog are mentioned twice in the Quran in chapter 18, verses 92 to 98, chapter 21, verse 96. So we continue our book study, inshallah, next week. We will see uh, what other questions are. I hope that you are also reading it, at least if not pre, then post reading it. So we enjoy learning with reading the book too. Question for you about, um, you mentioned three Imrans. Mm -hmm. Musa's father was one of them, I believe. Yes. And then uh, I just want to confirm I got the notes correct. You said uh, Hazrat, maybe Maryam's father was also yes. Imran? Mm -hmm. And then Hazrat Ali's father was Imran too as well, right? Correct. You got it. Okay, I got it. All right, thank you. Yali Madad, friends. Yali Madad. Yali Madad, thank you so much. Shukar Mola, Yali Madad, Yali Madad. Yali Madad, 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 Yali Mad